The totalitarian future feared and dreaded by countless gifted science fiction writers for the past hundred years is now virtually upon us. And unless enough people protest, write to their local MPs or whatever, and protest and prevent it happening, we are on the cusp of a terrifying new world order that will make COVID look like a picnic. Except, of course, plenty of Australians weren't allowed to have picnics <laughs> during COVID. So I guess that's a poor analogy. This week, the head of the World Health Organization, the Ethiopian former Marxist Tedros Adhanom Gebreyes, G -g -g sorry, G -g Gebreyes, I think it is, having just last week welcomed North Korean dictator Kim Jong Un to the board of the World Health Organization, announced the organization's plans to inflict global digital vaccine passports on every citizen on the planet. WHO will begin operations of the network today with the existing COVID-19 certificate as a global public good. Soon after, we will expand this infrastructure by incorporating other use, such as a digitized international certificate of vaccination, routine immunization cards, and international patient summaries. The system that Tedros is so enthusiastically promoting, the European system, would ultimately mean QR codes and digital vaccine and booster passports containing your entire medical history being necessary for any and all travel around the world. What the proposals do is they change what is currently, um, you know, guidance that the WHO mm. gives, binding recommendations, and that includes binding recommendations over things like lockdown, you know, mandatory vaccination, quarantine, isolation, restrictions on travel, all that kind of thing. Now, you may think that's all great, or you may not, but you would have to have been living under a rock for the past three years not to understand that a global digital health passport is the end of personal freedom, full stop. We keep on hearing how dangerous AI, artificial intelli intelligence is, and how it could spell our doom, perhaps, but a global pandemic accord or treaty or whatever it's called this week is the real threat to democracy, to freedom, and indeed to our own humanity. And only a very few brave politicians are speaking up. They plan that next year, one year from now, they will merge the pandemic treaty and the 300 amendments. They will be synchronized with each other, synthesized with each other, and they will be essentially one document and they will pass next year. But let's not depress ourselves with such matters. It's the 11th of June and I can't believe it. We're a third of the way through Pride Month. <laughs> the month we all express our affection for and compliance with the ideology and contrivances of the LG, uh, sorry, GT, sorry, Justin, what was it again? <laughs> LGDP, uh, LGT, LBG. <sighs> sorry, the uh, L, LB, no, G, where's the T gone? Two. Two LGBTQ. LGBTQ. Two plus. So there's a plus now? What's the two? Hang on, what, Justin? Two SLGBTQI plus. <laughs> Whew, thanks, <laughs> Justin. Whew. And remind me again, Justin, which flag should we be saluting? Excellent, and indeed that is precisely what the US Air Force are now doing. They are proposing to show our pride that we salute the flag. That's the one there, of course, the transgender, etc., etc., flag that has virtually entirely replaced the rainbow flag of the gay community of only a few years ago, the flag of same-sex marriage. Indeed, there are now gay groups, LGB groups, who are actively agitating to break away from the trans and queer groups, the TQ+, etc., etc. And little wonder, as has been pointed out to me by many gay people, the militant transgender movement is in fact deeply, deeply homophobic. In some cases, lesbians, for instance, are forced to not only accept, but are also demonised if they don't sleep with trans women, i.e. men. Here's a Californian fifth grade teacher called Ray Shelton. Mm -hmm. 
who has since been suspended from his job partly for talking plain common sense to a bunch of transgender activists. Men do not menstruate. Only women menstruate. Now, you can call Cis yourself whatever you don't want. don't menstruate, but trans men do menstruate. No, Same they as don't. non-binary people. <clears throat> Only Menstruating women. Menstruating is not exclusive. Yes. This is how insane this ideology has become. This is what happens when you allow children to be educated by political activists. They live in a fantasy world devoid of any sound basis in reality. And just watch the look of incomprehension on their faces when presented with reality. It's like they've never heard of it before. <laughs> Tell me what a man is. Well, what's a man to you? You define a man for me. You have chromosomes that are X and Y. That's what a man is. So why are we just looking at the... the the, the science of this as an the example, science. when when we've learned sex and gender sex. identity are two very, they're completely different things. They're not completely different They are things. completely different. They're completely different words. And sex <laughs> is what you're born with, the sexual reproductive organs you have. Gender is what you identify with. They're completely different Well, I don't accept things. that distinction. You have to argue for it. You're just giving a conclusion. You're, you're just making it up. People, the people who hate the truth People who hate the truth are because they see, they see the truth as hateful. If, if you want to identify in any way you can, you're free to do so. But that does not mean that the rest of us have to join that illusion. As I said, for stating those simple truths, as well as displaying four transgender flags cut together to look like a swastika, he lost his job and he's now trying to sue the school to get it back. But it's hardly surprising, is it, that this nonsense has spread like wildfire. This is what happens when you devote your entire education system to ideological propaganda, starting really, really young, like this. We want to uplift and celebrate our LGBTQIA plus family, friends, and communities. Yeah, that's right, Miss Ariana. <laughs> From our Sesame Street family to yours, Soon after, followed by this. Or this. And before you know it, you're graduating to free prosthetic penises to all comers of all ages at a trans mm. resistance march. Out there. And before you know it, the kiddies are invited to witness this sort of stuff, and I warn you to avert your eyes if the kids are present and watching at a public pride march on santa monica boulevard recently advertised as oh, yeah. family oh. friendly i did <laughs> Politicians, of course, are always keen to get in on the act, in this case with Sister Roma. So proud of uh, Sister Roma and her work uh, in the community, and I'm proud of California for standing strong uh, in, uh, to support uh, LGBTQ people. And sorry, just remind me again, who is this outstanding role model for the LGBT community? Oh, she's part of the, quote, badass, unquote, group, known as the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, involved with such artistic and sensitive gems as uh, this one. And fresh from spending time praising Sister Roma, that same politician amended a recent bill to make it possible in California for any parent who does not affirm their child's transgenderism to be charged with child abuse. Think about that. What a bizarre world we live in. But at least some individuals are starting to fight back against the madness. Also in the States, a group of Muslims and immigrants 
confronted LGBT activists screaming, not your children, protect our children. And this is a great way to split the left, getting traditional minority immigrant communities to break away and express their opposition to this gender insanity. But as I keep on saying, it's the gay community who are slowly waking up to how pernicious the radical trans agenda is. There is no pride in sexualizing children at drag shows. There is no pride in mutilating and sterilizing children in the name of gender-affirming care. This June, what are you proud of? Because we have some issues that we need to talk about. We're fighting back from inside the community. Join Gays Against Groomers in the battle against radical gender ideology that is destroying our youth. There you go. In Italy, meanwhile, Conservative Prime Minister Giorgio Maloney has declared a family pride month to promote traditional family values and pride in them. Maybe Albo could draw on his own Italian heritage and do the same thing here. And then have a listen to this poem, written by a 14-year-old girl, an Irish girl, against what she sees as the tyranny of the trans agenda. I am not a dress. We are women. We are warriors of steel. Woman is something no man will ever feel. Woman is not a skill that any man can hone. Woman is our word and is ours alone. I am not a dress to be worn on a whim. A man in a dress is nonetheless a him. Women are not simply what we wear. If this offends you, I do not care. I am not a bleeder nor a menstruator, a womb carrier or uterus haver. Those words and phrases are such a sham. Just call me a woman, it is who I am. We are women, we are warriors of steel. Woman is something no man will ever feel. Woman is not a skill that any man can hone. Woman is our word and is ours alone. The war on women, which we've mentioned here on Outsiders and been fighting against the war on women here on Outsiders for so long, will be won by women, by women like her and girls like her. The least we men can do is speak up for them. Shame on all those male and female politicians, business leaders, marketing people and professionals who pander to this radical transgender madness. Shame on you.